Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Howling at the Moon and I'm sipping on my iced tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Ultramarine Blue, Titanium White, Green Oxide, and Burnt Umber, which I will refer to as brown. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can certainly switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we are doing the first layer to our sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush, and the colors that I'm using are blue, black, brown, and white. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pre-mix myself a really nice dark blue color as the base color for my sky. So I've magically pre-mixed it, but I'm going to show you how I got there. So this is the color that I'm going for. How I got there is I used all of my blue except for this little bit here that I'll use for a demonstration and I added a little bit of black to it and a little bit of brown so the black will very easily take over so you just add a teeny tiny bit at a time and the brown I use just to kind of neutralize that blue a little bit so it's not so blue blue it turns it a little bit more of a um, of a natural blue to me. So I'm gonna take my bristle brush and I'm really just adding a teeny tiny bit of black to this quantity of blue. And conversely, if you were doing the larger quantity, you just wanna add a little bit of black to it. The blue will get darker as it dries. So just kind of plan for that as you are preparing that mixture. You don't want to um, bring it as dark as you want it because it'll turn a little bit darker as it dries. Then I'm going to add a teeny bit of brown. And again, I don't need much for brown. That's not going to change the darkness of the color at all. It will just give it like a more natural look to it. And then once you've achieved the shade that you want, which I've magically done in my big quantity over here, um, I'm going to be painting the sky. I know that I have a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to be putting on the sky like clouds, a big huge moon, some trees, a big rock. So I don't need this necessarily to be perfect but I am going to go for a kind of solid type of coat to it um, which I will most likely do two layers of paint on my on my sky, my, my this first layer of my sky. I'll probably do go over it twice so I have a nice soft solid look to it. But what I'm doing is I'm using that dark blue right now predominantly on the left hand side of my canvas. I'm just really um, adding it in this left to right brush stroke. You could certainly do circles or dots or crisscrosses, however you want to get it on here is totally fine. I'm working my way over towards the right hand side of my canvas. And on the right hand side, I'm going to use this dark blue down in the bottom right hand corner and as well as 
in the top right hand corner. And then I'm going to start adding white to this area with this dark blue. Because this is going to be where my moon is going to go. So I want this area of the sky to in essence be lighter than this area of the sky. So without washing my brush, I'm picking up some white paint. And you can think of this as a circular kind of area because that's how the moon will project its glow. So if you just start adding white to this dirty brush and to the center area and then just kind of continue to expand it out until you reach the um, the darker blue region that'll give you a nice gradient within your sky so I'm just going to kind of keep adding my white as I get into the area that's going to meet this dark blue region I will start picking up the dark blue plus my white on my brush and that's going to give me a uh, area where I can blend the two colors together. And you can see it's got, you know, some shades of light and some shades of dark, and that's going to allow me to get a really nice, pretty gradient throughout that sky as I work my moon into the equation in a little while. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. Right now I'm gonna be picking up some blue, the dark blue and white on my brush to get these two areas to kind of talk a little bit more together and get them to blend in a little bit more together. And I'm just, again, using this kind of circular type of brush stroke or circular shape to this area to um, speak to the shape of the moon and the glow that it is casting upon the sky near it. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep fiddling with this. Again, I may do a second coat just so I can get the, um, the dark blue to have a really nice solid look to it. But you might like yours the way that it is. These um, colors do tend to, as we're, as we're blending them in together like this, they may look a little bit streaky, which is totally fine. You can, um, if, if you like that look, awesome know that you are going to have a whole bunch of clouds on top of this which will um, make it not so prominent and you don't need to see the details as much onto it but then once you've got your first layer to your sky we will be using the same brush again for the next step so you can just you can see what I'm doing right now I've, I've just picked up some more of my dark blue and I'm giving it that circular kind of motion throughout the rest of it but you know, again, fiddle with yours, let it dry, see if it's as dark as you want or as soft as you want, and then you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our moon. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, brown, and black. Um, you could certainly use some of your sky blue too, but I'm going to be using, I'm not going to be using that color so the moon will stand out a little bit more. But I do want to forewarn you before you start this step that you do want to make sure that your canvas is dry, especially where your moon is going. Um, so you could take that extra long break right now if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fanning method to get it dry you know, creative wise, or you can just whip out your blow dryer like I did and get it dry that way. So whatever way you'd like to make sure your canvas is dry, you can go right ahead and do so. So I am having my moon clearly up in this vicinity of my canvas. I've got my moon a little bit, the, the, um, the left side of my moon is a little bit to the right of the center of my canvas. I've got it a couple of inches over from the right, a little bit from the top. So I'm going to give myself a couple of markers. So that way when I go to create the circle for my moon, I've got a places to kind of shoot for. So I'm going to start with all three of those colors on my brush. A little bit of white, a touch of black, not a lot, just a little tiny touch of black and a little bit of brown paint. I'm going for the crater kind of looking moon as opposed to the big white bright moon. So I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker. This is about a quarter of the way over my canvas and down maybe about an inch, inch and a half somewhere around here. I'm going to come down about a quarter of the way down my canvas right about here, give myself a little bit of a marker. And then from here, I go straight down from here. This is a little bit below my halfway mark. So if my halfway up my canvas is right about here, I'm maybe about an inch below that. 
And then theoretically, however tall or however wide you've spaced these two, which ironically is almost the same as my brush, you want to go that same width um, from left to right. That'll give you a circle. Or you can whip out like a paper plate or something <laughs> and give yourself a nice clean circle. So now that I've got those four markers, I'm going to just kind of connect them with my, with my circle. So I just kind of utilize my, my sight to give me these curved edges, something like this. I need to put a little bit more paint on my brush so I can go ahead and get this one over here. The only downfall about doing these type of four markers is your brain might tend to um, want to connect them like diagonally and that'll give you almost a diamond type of a shape as opposed to a circular shape. So just when the t by the time you're done creating this circle type of shape, just step back and kind of visually look to see if it actually looks like a circle as opposed to like a diamond. Be, again, just because we've set these these markers in place, sometimes our, our brain wants to just kind of give us a, um, you know, connect them with more of a straight line as opposed to a curved line. And then once I've got something that resembles a circular shape, I'm going to utilize those three colors on my brush and fill it in with circles. So I use this rubbing kind of effect. I want some areas to be lighter, some areas to be darker. So I'm gonna utilize maybe a little bit more black in, in one spot, maybe a little bit more brown in another spot, and I'm just gonna maybe a little more white in another spot, and I'm just gonna kind of keep going until I have a variety of these grayish type, grayish, whitish type of tones to resemble what resembles to me like a moon filled with craters. And then what I can do is I just kind of fiddle with those edges a little bit, making sure that I've got a good enough edge to it. You can, if you want to, you can do a couple of different things to get this to pop out a little bit more. You can take a little bit of say black or even your dark blue, and you can give the edge a little bit of crispness by just kind of darkening part of that edge. You don't have to go all the way around if you don't want to. This will give you that illusion of it kind of going around the corner and having that um, circular type of look to it. I went a little bit too dark in through here, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna blend that in with the rest of it. Um, and you can also, conversely, you can put a white type of, or a very light type of edge around the exterior of it. So I'm gonna demonstrate that by washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of just white paint on my brush. So still just using the bristle brush. And you can take it and you can illuminate the, the edge or the, um, or the sky right next to it with that really light color. So I could take a little bit of white and just kind of get this edge to be a little bit brighter and or I can take that lightness and I can go outside of the moon a little bit and put a little bit of that lightness right along the exterior. So that's going to allow the edge of the moon to be visible on top of the sky a little bit more if you need it to be. That's not 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 a necessity, but if you felt like, oh, my, my sky's not popping out enough, you can certainly do that. And if it goes wrong, just kind of put, bring back some of your sky color and just get it to blend right in. And then you can keep manipulating your moon as much as you want. You can get that sky to glow more around it, again, by just white paint, but we'll be using our, um, we'll have some clouds around it that will get it to illuminate even more. And then we're gonna be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your moon all on here, I might add a little bit more brightness around this edge here just to get it to be a little more glowing around the edge, but you can certainly you know, play with yours as much as you want, and then you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting some clouds. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush, and again, I do kind of forewarn you to just make sure that your canvas is dry, even your moon, because I'm gonna put some clouds in front of my moon, but you can certainly put your clouds wherever you'd like to. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are predominantly white, but I will also be using black, brown, 
and my background blue. Um, this way I can get them to really just kind of look like they're part of the sky and they can just be drifting by and we can see through them and they can have lots of depth to them. So I'm going to be leaving my top left corner of my canvas nice and dark. I'm going to get, have clouds just kind of drifting what will seemingly be to the right. They'll be pretty light down in the bottom and pretty airy in through here and then I'll have some, a couple of really bright ones closing in or even overlapping the moon to show that the moon is kind of illuminating them. So when I do a step like this, I'm not going to be using a lot of paint on my brush and I'm going to be using a circular type of scrubbing um, brush stroke where I can kind of manipulate that paint to be thinner and thicker in certain areas. And I want to have some of the clouds on the darker side so it looks like they are in essence kind of uh, shadowed in some areas and illuminated in other areas from the from the sun or from the moon. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to start with a tiny bit of all four colors. So a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, and I'm just kind of dabbing it in my um, in the color and a tiny bit of white. So I have all four of those colors on my brush at the same time. I want down in through here to be kind of light, um, but it doesn't have to go super duper light because we're going to have some trees in front and I want you to be able to really see those trees. So I'm just going to start with those four colors on my brush and really give myself some soft, um, kind of airy type of clouds and you can have these formed whatever way that you want. Yours can be really thick, they can be really thin. It's going to be a visual preference on your part. I think I want a little bit more brown in through here. And I want some of my background to continue to be evident. So I'm not doing this really heavy paint. I just really am looking to get this softness on top that looks like these airy mist or clouds or something just gently going through that atmosphere. The brown is going to help to really make this look nice and natural along with that background blue. So again, just kind of forming where I want them at this point. I'm not really using, picking up any, um, at this moment, any more white on my brush because I'm going into this darker region. So I just picked up some of my background blue and brown working with a dirty brush, which is gonna give me the, the remnants of whatever lightness I had over in that vicinity. And you can probably detect or hear my brush really just kind of scrubbing onto my canvas. And again, I'm just picking up a variety of the brown, blue, maybe a touch of black here and there, but nothing too um, dramatic. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm really just looking for this airy type of look right now. In a second, I will start to add more lightness um, as I go towards that towards the moon, but right now, again, I'm just looking to kind of tell myself where I want all of this atmospheric um, information to go. And you can certainly put a little bit up in this dark area just to make it so it's not so flat looking, but that's gonna be, again, a judgment call on your part. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put a little bit of these clouds floating by the moon. And I really wanna kind of be cautious with the amount of paint that I have on my brush. So I just took whatever colors I wanted and then just wiped it off on my paper towel. So this way I can, again, control what's happening on my canvas. I don't wanna go too, too much. I don't wanna cover up all of my background. I'm really just looking to give it this light, um, you know, kind of drifty type of look where we can almost see through some of these clouds and I'm still keeping them on the darker side at the moment, dark compared to white, um, because I wanna be able to utilize that white in a minute to add that fluffiness or that real um, look that's gonna come from the, from the moon itself. So I'm just kind of drifting some of these clouds in through here. Maybe I'll put a little bit going in front of the moon, somewhere off in, in through here. And they don't all have to go in the same direction. They don't all have to be the same color. Really just utilize your imagination and how you're, how you're kind of seeing these clouds. If you want yours to be lighter or brighter or darker, you can certainly manipulate that. So I've 
pretty much kind of put them where I want them. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness to them on, on part of them that is facing the moon. So without washing my brush, I just picked up a little bit of white paint and I'm gonna just kind of add a little bit more lightness to some of these clouds on the side that is facing the moon. And you could certainly, I mean, clouds have so many layers and fluffs and, you know, look to them. So you can certainly make yours lighter or darker in various areas. But the, the trick is to keep some of that darkness showing. So again, you don't wanna use a lot of paint. You can really just kind of steer some lighter sections that are facing that, that moon or closest to the moon. And that's gonna give you that look of these being really fluffy and having a lot of dimension to them. And I'm thinking I want a little bit lighter in through here. I'm gonna have my rock where my, um, where my wolf is standing in through here and I want that to really pop out. So I wanna make sure that I've got this area back here light enough so when we do put the wolf on there, it will pop out um, in, a, in a nice way. So I just wanna make sure that I've got enough lightness in through here. In a second again, I will start adding a bit more lightness to the ones right um, touching that moon. But right now I'm just kind of working my clouds to make sure that they're in the arrangement that I want and they've got enough lightness to them. And again, there's no two sets of clouds alike in this world. So you can certainly steer yours in whatever way you want. You can always bring back some of that sky, the blue that you used and just kind of keep manipulating these. I think right now I'm, I'm pretty ready to start adding um, that brightness to the ones right at the moon. So picked up a good amount of white paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this real bright white right along where that moon is. And this is gonna add that extra special kind of um, illuminating aspect to these clouds. And the moon's gonna pop out a little bit more because now I'm adding more contrast in front of it. And you don't have to put this white on all of the clouds that are right around the moon. You just wanna kind of give some aspects of the, that brightness in you know, some of the parts of the, of the clouds. I'm gonna put a little bit on the edges of these ones in through here. You can just kind of tap it along the edges if you want, maybe a little bit down in through here. And again, I'm trying to concentrate on getting these brighter parts in the direction of where the moon is to, to tell the viewer that that's what's illuminating them. And then you can certainly fiddle with this all you want. I might add a little bit more here and there as I'm, as I'm finishing up mine. Um, and then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your clouds in whatever type of arrangement that you would like them to be, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like. Clouds are hard to stop just for the record. <laughs> but you, once, you, once you feel like you've got them in a, in a nice way that, you, that is making you happy, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on our rock and our trees. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, I'm gonna use just black paint. So again, this is one of those steps where you could certainly make it into whatever style of trees that you like or whatever kind of rock that you like, but I'm just giving myself a big, rock that looks like it would, um, like my wolf would have to climb up on it and there's a little bit of a platform on the top. And then I'm just gonna do the tops of pine trees, which are a pretty uh, iconic and simple to paint type of tree. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers so I know how big I want this rock to be. So I'm gonna kind of find the center of my canvas from top to bottom and from left to right. So I would say the center of my canvas is about here. I'm gonna come down maybe an inch and a half to two inches and over to the left about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a little bit of marker. And again, I'm just using black paint so we have a nice base, dark, a nice dark base coat for this. 
And then I'm gonna travel down to the bottom of my canvas and over about two inches, make myself a little marker, which might be a little bit difficult for you to see on camera because I have a dark base, but somewhere in this vicinity. And then bottom left-hand corner will be my third marker. So I'm gonna take this from this marker in through here. I'm gonna bring it out a little bit and make myself a jagged kind of rocks edge. So I'm gonna take this and just bring it out a little bit to the right and then I'll just kind of wiggle it a little bit and then just bring it down in a jagged type of um, motion to give myself this right edge of the rock. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the left side, only I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a kind of platform. It doesn't have to be flat. It can have a little bit of a diagonal look to it. And I'm gonna bring this out pretty darn far. And again, it doesn't have to be straight. I mean, it's a rock. So you can certainly get it to be in whatever type of formation that you want. And then maybe just a little bit, something like that. I'm gonna paint it all in with black paint. So no fancy brush stroke because black paint really covers nice and well. You just wanna get a good coverage on it. We'll put a little bit of dimension with some um, lighter colors after it dries. But right now I'm just looking to get the, the base coat on here, the shape that I want. And again, you can certainly change the shape of your rock all you want. This is just one that I thought would look good on our, uh, on our painting. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be doing my pine trees. So my pine trees are in essence going to look like tall triangles, but I want them all in different heights. So in through this area here, I don't want them any taller than my rock. So I'm all, I'm gonna bring maybe my tallest one is gonna be about this, this height in through here. And maybe I'll make another one that same height. And then all of my other ones are just gonna be various um, different heights throughout the way. And all I'm doing right now is kind of giving myself what I like to call place markers, which is just these um, vertical lines that are telling me where I want these tree tops to go, but you could certainly do yours in whatever um, way that you want. That just kind of helps steer me in the right direction. And then I have a few over here on the left hand side. So these ones I've got a little bit taller than this one, the ones on the right. So I'm going to go maybe I would say about this high on this one. And then maybe I've got a couple of shorter ones coming out on this area and through here. Once I have that established, all I'm gonna do with my brush is I'm gonna kind of tap it so I get these kind of ruffled edges to my, to my pine tree. So you could use your large brush if you wanted to have a really ruffled edge to these. You could um, have fun with creating the exterior shape of them whatever way that you want but what I like to do is just make sure that I'm, I maintain that pointy top to it and that's going to tell the viewer that this in fact is some kind of pine tree that has that iconic kind of triangular shape to it and I'm just making sure that I have a full coverage down at the bottom so this is going to also tell the viewer that these are really tall trees and that wherever that wolf is he's kind of kind he's climbed up taller than these trees are so maybe it's going to imply that he's on a really high mountain somewhere or rock formation and you know he is perhaps closer to us than these trees are so by just doing the the tips of them down in this silhouetted kind of way it's allowing for a lot of information to be told to the viewer as to the scenery itself and you can see I'm, I'm really just being super carefree when it comes to adding um, the the different kind of branches or pine needles as they as they might be referred to on the sides of these trees and again you could certainly utilize that bristle brush that'll give you a more organic type type of um type of look to them so uh, just giving these little branches coming out making sure you have like a prickly kind of look on the edges of them and a look that looks kind of natural so if you've got to stick out a branch a little bit farther here and there just to give a little bit more of a 
realistic look to it. If that makes your painterly eye happy, then feel free to do so. Um, and then I've got these little couple of ones over here on the left hand side. The trick to just making natural looking trees and foliage and stuff is to almost have it not be systematic. So you want one side to maybe be a little bit lumpier, bumpier than the other, or have that rogue branch kind of sticking out every now and again. So making it look like, you know, it just naturally has been weathered, you know, it's broken some branches here and there, one branch kind of is longer than the other, that's what's gonna give it that more natural appearance, making them different heights, making them different sizes, um, if they all are the same height and they all have the same characteristics to it, it'll they'll look more like a like a like a farm where they were planted all in a row. But if you want to give it that natural wild kind of side to it, making them look different from one another is going to benefit you in the long run. And then we are going to be switching to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your trees all nice and assembled here, you can put this. A medium brush away wherever you'd like to take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a little silhouette of a wolf so I'm gonna be using my small brush I'm gonna be using mostly black paint we'll do a layer in black and then we'll put a little tiny illusion of some fur on the chest with maybe some brown and white so I'm gonna use my small brush you can certainly utilize um, any silhouette of a wolf that you want. You can have them standing or sitting or, you know, howling or just looking at the moon, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna have mine kind of in a standing position and howling in the direction of the moon. So I've, I'm gonna have mine in this vicinity. The way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have, my body is gonna be set up about, uh, I would say about a half of an inch above my rock. I'm gonna do a basic shape like the shape of a bean or a kidney bean or something for the body. Then we'll add some legs, a tail and a mouth and some an ear and we'll be all done. <laughs> so I'm gonna go a little bit above my rock. I would say maybe about an inch and a half in from the right hand side and maybe about a half of an inch to an inch up from there. That's gonna be like the belly of my, um, of my, of my doll, of my wolf. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come a little bit to the right of that, maybe about a half of an inch, and I'm going to go up maybe about two, maybe about two inches. That's going to be about where the top of my bean is going to go. So, and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of where I want that bean type shape to end. So I'm going to have that ending somewhere in this vicinity. So with those markers, that's going to allow me to kind of give myself the shape, I'm gonna call it, of a some kind of bean. <laughs> and again, we'll make we'll we'll make it look a, like a wolf after we've got this this on here. So I'm gonna bring this down in through here, bring it out just a little bit, or maybe it looks like um, like a seal or something like a a sea lion kind of shape when I start it like this. So something like this is going to give me my initial shape. I'm going to color that in with black paint. And again, your shape can be a little bit different than mine. This is just uh, the, I like to be able to start, um, especially animals or anything that's got a lot of form to it. I like to find a basic shape that I can start with and then just build off of that. So how I'm going to build off of this, I'm going to give myself a couple of front legs. So I'm going to come in here just a little bit give myself a vertical line coming down to the rock. When you're doing these legs and stuff, just kind of make sure that you plan for the other ones. So my two front ones are gonna be pretty close to the front of the body, like this and through here. They're not very far apart from one another and I'm really just doing simple kind of vertical lines to, to get them on there. My back legs are going to, we're gonna, see kind of um, the the um, the thigh part. So I'm coming over here, maybe about a half of an inch. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a curved line like this, and then a vertical line to put where that foot would go. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and do the back side of that. So something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The um, if, if something goes wrong, you can always bring up the rock to hide the feet. So, you know, don't don't feel the the pressure of making this look perfect. And then I've got my back leg coming in through here and then something like this. And again, I'm just going for a real kind of generic type of look to this, but you could certainly you could certainly model yours after, you know, the a, a photograph or any anything any kind of visual reference that you have. And I might I might um alter this a little bit once I've put the face and the tail and stuff on. I'm going to do my tail right now. The tail of wolves is pretty wide when it's meeting the body. So I'm going to take up a good amount of this space with the bulk of the tail and then just kind of flip it out a little bit at the, at the tip of it. And again, you could make this really fluffy. You could add little bits of, um, texture at the bottom of it with just kind of pulling out a couple of pieces of fur at that bottom and that'll give you a lot of texture and you could also hide that back leg too if you know if it didn't go exactly as you had planned you could certainly hide that with um with your leg I think I need to put a little bit of lightness in between these two legs so this is one of those things that as you're doing this if you you know if you're looking at it, it's like oh that doesn't look totally right you can come back in with some of your background color and just kind of make any little modifications that you feel um, are are needed I think I need this little thigh to be a little bit further down like that maybe close that off a bit there we go and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the nose so I've got my my area in through here. I want to add a bottom jaw and then the upper muzzle part and then um, a bump for the eye and a bump for the ear. So the bottom jaw is going to go somewhere in through here and it's going to be pretty small. I want it to kind of go in the direction of the of the moon. So just a little bump out like that. My upper muzzle part is going to be a little bit taller so a little bit taller and it gets a kind of a little squared off nose. I'm going to just bring that up and kind of square it off like that. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a bump for where the eye goes. So I'm going to just make sure this kind of works in like it belongs. That works out. I think I need the muzzle a little bit wider. Something like that. And then my ear is going to pop out ha about halfway down that neck. I just pull a little piece of that ear out in through here. And then what I would do if I was you is I would step away from your canvas and look at it from a distance and see if anything looks like it doesn't belong or it looks a little big or a little small. And then you just kind of keep adjusting. Maybe you want yours to have a little bit poofier of a chest and you put a little bit more fluff on that. And then what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of brown and white on my brush and I'm just going to give a real faint illusion of a little bit of that fur on that chest. I don't want to go too um, invasive with it. I really just want this wolf to look like it's in the silhouettes um, and just adding that tiny bit of texture to this area will make it look like it's being illuminated by the um, moon. And then I'm going to be utilizing my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful wolf all nice and completed, you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our rock and our trees. I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to be using brown, green, and white, and if I need to, I'll go into black as well. So really what I'm looking to do is just add a highlight to these objects from the moon. So my rock, I'm gonna be using a lot of brown, and I'm gonna be giving it some texture too, but also a highlight on that right-hand side. And then the trees, I'm really just looking to kind of illuminate or give them a little bit of glow on the tips of them to tell the viewer that they're being lit up by the moon. So I'm going to start with my rock. I've got brown paint on my brush and I'm going to take my brown paint and I'm going to just wiggle it predominantly on that right hand side 
of the rock and just bring some texture down towards the bottom. So you might choose to go really detailed with this. You might choose to go really subtle with it. It's gonna be a visual preference on your part. The brown will get darker as it dries. So just know that even if it looks pretty light when it's wet, because of that black background, it will end up pretty dark. I wanna give the illusion of this being kind of a platform on the rock, so I'm gonna give a horizontal type of um, appearance in through there. If you want it to look like it dips down, you can make it darker. Then if you want it to look like it's protruding, you make it a little bit lighter, and you could have long streaks in it. I want it to progressively get darker towards this left hand side so I'm just kind of running out of paint as I go towards that left hand side. Then I'm going to pick up a touch of white with my brown to give myself a bright highlight on this right edge in through here. So white plus a little bit of brown just kind of bringing a couple of these areas out to make them look like they're really getting a bit of that brightness from the moon and you can bring this some of this lightness back a bit if you want there to look like there might have some form to this rock and it might you know part of it might be facing that moon a little bit more and again this is one of those steps give it a couple minutes let it dry to see if you want to add any more to it i'm adding a bit more lightness down here just so we can see the um the profile of it as it comes down into the bottom region of the of the canvas and if you feel like you went too much like oh my god it's too bright pick up a little bit of black on your brush and that's going to help you bring it back to that original state or darken it as much as you want to and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until it's as textured as as you want it to be once you've got your rock done then i'm just going to wash and dry my brush and move on to my trees the tree tippy tops are going to have a bit of green on them so i just washed my brush took a little bit of green I think I'm going to use a little bit of brown too, green and brown, just to give myself a couple of little bits of um, the appearance of the green color, the forest color on the tips of, of these trees, not adding much, just kind of um, tapping my brush along those edges. And then I'll do the same over on this left hand side. So just a, again, a tiny bit of green and maybe brown is... Um, giving me this look and of course they'll take on some of that black that's underneath and then I'm going to without washing my brush I'm picking up a teeny bit of white paint and I'm going to do even less of marks along those edges this is going to give me that appearance that from the other side where the moon is it's casting these little sparkle highlights on the tips of some of these trees. I don't recommend you do them all, just a couple or you know little bits here and there. So it looks like some of the trees are in front and some are behind being shadowed by other trees. So you don't necessarily want to do them all, but doing a little bit on some of them really helps to provide that that illusion that the um, moon is at giving light to these to these other um, objects within the painting and again if you feel like you've gone too much like I feel like that little tip there was a little bit too much I just picked up some black paint to uh, dull that down and then we have one little tiny step left to go so once you've got your trees and your rock all nice and completed and again feel free to just kind of keep fiddling with it as much as you want to but once you've got that done we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i'm not quite sure if in the last step i said that you I was going to use my medium or my small brush, but I'm going to use my small brush to sign my painting. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going bottom left on this one, and I think I'm going to use my sky blue, my dark blue color, to, to add my signature here. I do my initials, but you could certainly use your first name 
or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to use as your identifying mark is totally fine. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful night scene and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.